any year that gives me a pair of French slackers trying to train a giant fly. And a hell demon controlled by a bratty little girl is a year to rejoice in. I will bathe in your blood. Don't worry. Be worried. Okay, neither of those films made my top 10, but they both have a place in my heart, and I hope you'll seek them out. But on to the top 10. In the number 10 spot is No Time to Die, the film that suffered repeated delays before finally hitting cinemas in October. I saw it four times in theaters and fell in love with Daniel Craig's final Bond appearance. As a lifelong Bond fan, I felt the film delivered all the action you expect from a 007 movie, but with unexpected emotional weight. Coming in at number nine is an audacious turn by French director Julia Docournau. With Titane, she delivers another body horror tale that's both gender and genre bending, as it takes one strange turn after another. At number eight is Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho, a film that made me swoon. It's a ravishing valentine to the movies and to London in the 1960s. It simply gave me goosebumps with its rapturous sense of style. At number seven, I highlight Val, one of 2021's many outstanding documentaries. My name is Val Kilmer. Compiled from decades of videos and from a narrative Kilmer has his son read, this heartbreaking and inspiring documentary serves up a compelling portrait of an artist as well as the creative process. We don't see many films from Africa released here in the U.S., but I found my number six pick, This Is Not a Burial, This Is a Resurrection, on Amazon Prime and was dazzled by its unique narrative style and window to a very different world. At number five is Jane Campion's The Power of the Dog, a Western revenge tale told with unexpected nuance and elegance. I love Campion's confidence in creating a film made up of silences and minimal action. Then at number four, I have a second documentary and an animated one called Flea. It's the true story of Amin, who arrived in Denmark as an unaccompanied minor from Afghanistan. It starts in the present with the adult Amin recounting a secret he's been hiding for decades. The audio of Amin's interview is then brought to vivid life through animation and archival footage. My number three slot is Joel Cohen's adaptation of Shakespeare's Macbeth. My husband. King that shall be. If we should fail. We fail. This is another film that's simply intoxicatingly cinematic. Cohen's claustrophobic and horror-tinged imagery perfectly match Shakespeare's tale of a man who feels more and more trapped by fate and his own bad choices. At number two is another film I found streaming on Amazon called Nine Days. You are being considered for the amazing opportunity of life. Actor Winston Duke excels in this feature film debut of writer-director Edson Oda. The visually poetic film is inventive and offers an achingly sweet celebration of the tiny details of life that we should appreciate. And at number one is Ruski Hamaguchi's Drive My Car. The film doesn't show its hand as it seems to meander about, but your patience is richly rewarded with an exquisitely crafted story about grief and loss and finding human connections. Many of these breathtaking films are currently available on streaming platforms. Beth Accomando, KPBS News.